Um, sort of change the focus a little bit and talk about uh, something a little less controversial, social issues. Um, three social issues. One, would you support a bill legalizing medicinal marijuana in Florida? Two, would you support a bill legalizing physician-assisted suicide in Florida? And three, would you support a bill repealing Florida's gay adoption ban? I would support medicinal marijuana. Uh, could you read the next two questions? Uh, would you support a bill legalizing physician assisted suicide in Florida like they have in Oregon? And would you support a bill repealing Florida's ban on gay adoption? I, I can't support the physician assisted suicide, but I would repeal the ban on gay adoption. First was uh, medical marijuana, I would support that. Uh, the second one, physician assisted suicide, I need more information because that is a tougher issue. Uh, it would depend on the bill. It's always easy to say what you're for against an issue, but you have to go to legislation. So yeah, I'm open to the idea, but I'm not sure I can say yes or no today because I want to see what the bill would say. And the third one, I not only support it, I co sponsored a bill this year uh, that would repeal the ban on gay adoption because I think it's what's in interest of the best interest of the children. And I think it's silly to have a ban when we have a waiting list for children ready for adoption. To discriminate against anybody uh, for any reason, it makes no sense. So I strongly uh, support repealing the ban on adoption, and I uh, think that that uh, should pass when we get uh, more reasonable legislation. Richard, and Richard, to your point, um, I think the answers to those questions sort of show a streak of independence. You probably wouldn't see the Republican Party answer those questions the same way that these guys did. Something that uh, isn't uh, quite so simple to understand, but maybe. Uh, very important to the, uh, the voters of Monroe County, redistricting. The voters are going to be asked to vote uh, on uh, uh, on some issues, uh, constitutional amendments to the ballot that would uh, establish a new way to uh, build districts, legislative districts in uh, in the state. How would each of you uh, recommend that Monroe County voters vote on these? And I understand that they're not completely set yet because there's some court action. But how would you recommend that Monroe County uh, voters vote? And, and why, and do you think that it uh, could be utilized to uh, change the uh, state senate district? Uh, currently, uh, there are two on the ballot, one was thrown on. There are amendments five and six, which were put on the ballot by the citizens. I strongly support passage of amendments five and six. The reason amendments five and six are important is they set standards that say you cannot, in redistricting, which by the way happens next year after the census, you cannot have redistricting support a particular party or candidate. And I think it's wrong the way things are done now. Districts are badly gerrymandered. I think we need to fix that. Regardless of the party you're in, I'm not saying it's good for Democrats or Republicans. It's bad for the people. When you have districts that go along railroad tracks, and they have nothing in common. They're only drawn to favor of both the party. And I'm not blaming the Republicans, because typically when Democrats are in charge, Democrats did it that way too. And so it's an equal opportunity problem. And I think we need to fix it with Amendments 5 and 6. Amendment 7 was thrown on the ballot. I, I voted against Amendment 7. That was a legislative one, and I thought it was misleading, and it, it kind of confused the voters. I think it was intended to confuse the voters. A judge in Leon County threw it off the ballot and go to Supreme Court. If it goes back to the ballot, I urge you to vote no, because I, I think it's a bad amendment. I think 5 and 6 are good. I would vote yes. Amendment 7 is bad. I don't think that 5 and 6 fit the bill. I think that ultimately, the individuals that put these bills up there and, and want this out there are individuals with their own agenda. Ultimately, the reason why we have a three-tiered system, why our forefathers created the Senate, the House, the Governor's Office, to make sure that there is equity across the lines. So I think that for us to try to figure out a way and to suggest that gerrymandering is um, a thing of the past, no matter what system they're putting in place, there's just another chair. So ultimately, uh, I think that uh, Florida has done a great job. Uh, if you look at the consistency, of the districts, meaning that there's a balance. There's some districts that are always going to be won by a Democrat. There's some districts that are always going to be won by a Republican. Our district is perfect, right down the middle. One way, one way, one way. So I think that so far it's worked. It's worked for Monroe County, and I think we'll continue to work. Uh, 
I support amendments five and six, and uh, I credit the people that did bring that forth, that the public could bring something forth by themselves to get something on the ballot. Um, but I also support it because it tries to take the politics out of redistricting. And regardless of who brought it forth or why, and who supports it or not, is that's an important thing to take the politics out of the redistricting. Because I suppose we could possibly win elections with ideas versus the people in power controlling the districts to keep themselves entrenched in power. I think that's a failure. I think we should win with ideas and on our job reference. When you're in there, you should be able to win re-election if you're doing a good job for people. And if they redistrict your district, you should still be able to bring forth what you've done as a public servant and a state legislator and win on those bases. So I didn't support Amendment 73 brought forward either because I think that was getting back to the same old, same old of trying to keep control and working around areas of common interest. Um, I think it is doable to do the redistricting primarily through computers, and that would take the human influence out of it. The people that uh, were, would be opposed to this want that human influence in there so that they can kind of control the power. So there are ways to do this, there are systems available, and there are people that work with that to eliminate the gerrymandering, and it's important that we pursue those objectives to take the politics out of it, because regardless of what uh, party's in power, they're gonna keep trying to do the same old thing, so uh, thank you. Uh, follow up to uh, from, from Morgan and the other fellows can join in too if you want. Uh, the state senate district for Monroe County uh, has has come under some criticism. It, it very uh, it, it's an unusual a district in the way it's strong. Uh, Morgan, you you seem comfortable with it. Well, I mean, I think that ultimately, as far as us and the county is concerned, Monroe County, there will always be short. Why? Because we only have 70,000 as a population. Miami is obviously a lot bigger and a lot greater than us. Uh, so our district at this particular time is broken down where House seats 120, 43% 43, 43 of the voters are out of um, Florida City, Homestead, and Miami Dade. Uh, at the Senate level, obviously they're one of 40 that will spread it out. And the way that they've dispersed it, um, I think that comfortably speaking, uh, if you look at the Senate on obviously knows a lot more about the older politics, is that they divided those Senate seats out pretty standardly uh, based upon the party that had the influence. I think our Senate district is a good example of what's happened in Tallahassee. Uh, the party in charge basically uh, set up districts that uh, they wanted uh, Democratic seats to be uh, primarily black or Jewish. They basically packed the districts. And so, for example, our Senate seat is actually a minority access seat. And it was drawn that way, uh, basically, uh, to allow one party to get dominance. The state said that despite the state of Florida having almost equal number of Democrats and Republicans, it's actually more rich for Democrats in the state of Florida than, than Republicans. Uh, the count of, out of the 40 senators, there's 26 Republicans and 14 uh, Democrats. That doesn't sound like a good way to draw the districts. In the House, when I ran in 2006, out of 120 House members, 85 are Republicans and 35 are Democrats. Once again, regardless of your party affiliation, that doesn't really sound like the way to draw the legislature to represent the citizens of the state of Florida. So I believe that we should go back and re reapportion and not draw a particular party, not draw for a particular person, but draw for what's in the best interest of the citizens because these districts are drawn very badly. Our Senate seat is a good example. It's not just Dade County. It has Palm Beach, Collier, uh, Broward, uh, Henry County, and Monroe County. And it has no sense to it in the fact that it was created for a certain purpose. It wasn't really created for Senator Bullard. It was just created to be a black access. And it's, it's worked out that way. But really, that's not the reason why these seats should exist. They should exist when it's in the best interest of the citizens. We need to change the way these seats are drawn and have people up there who will draw them fairly. I think uh, what, you know, going back to trying to take the, the uh, individual and the person influence out of it and try to do more with computers in regards to this is you can come up with a number of instances where districts are drawn, whether it be uh, minority, whether it be geography, whether it be uh, political party. And you have to find a way. People have told me, ah, you can't just rely on the computers. But I would say that the error and the injustice created by a computer would be much less so than what's going on, as Ron had mentioned right now, in our Senate district. So, I mean, we have to, we have to start opening our minds to better ways of doing things. And I will always err on the side of trying to reduce the effect or, or politics or, or power mongering that goes on in any way in the government. And this is one of those. And we have to try to find a way to eliminate it. Thank you. 
Gentlemen, another critically important issue to voters in Monroe County are windstorm insurance rates. Um, during the last legislative session, Governor Chris vetoed proposed property insurance legislation that would have, among many other things, continued a law requiring companies to seek rate approval before passing premium rates on consumers. Um, I want to know if you believe that we need a change in the law to better strengthen consumer protections and assist insurance companies in improving their solvency. Uh, if so, I want to know specifically what kind of regulation you believe would create a healthy, competitive, but appropriately regulated market. Well, I think that ultimately that they should be regulated in the sense that they have to be approved, the rates. I think that there needs to be parity across Florida starting. Right now, you can look at the Panhandle and their rates are less than our rates. Perfect example is Pensacola. My in-laws live there and Pensacola has been hit three times as to our one. His rate for windstorm is less than $1,000 and mine at my house is right under $4,000. So I think that we need to start first by creating parity across the state. Secondly, I think we need to open up the competitive markets, allowing us as consumers to choose where we buy our insurance. It shouldn't have to be just housed in Florida. If they want to cross the lines and somebody from another state wants to invest into our state and take the risk, I think that ultimately they should have the free market opportunity to do it. When I remember the scene in 2006, one of the biggest issues we were facing at the time was a huge increase being sought by citizens' property insurance. In fact, that increase is the main reason why a great group called Firm was created. Uh, Commissioner Johnston and Tommy Mack and others were here, uh, and they basically helped set it up along with Heather Brothers and others to basically fight that increase. Since I got elected in 2006, my biggest advisor on any insurance issue has been Firm. On the bill you talked about this year, every time the amendment was offered, uh, we had Colleen Repetto and others up there, and I would say, what do you think about this? Because they had experts who worked with Firm, and I relied for, for a great deal of my decisions on Firm. So what things need to be done? One is, one of the biggest issues is file and use. And, and, and before we had this legislation, the insurance company come in and raise their rate and then get approval. That's called use and file. I support file and use. Before you can increase your insurance rate, you must apply and get approval. Because what happened in the past, we saw the citizens actually wanted a rate increase that was unjustified. And because of firm's good efforts, not only did I get the increase, they were forced to roll back their rate. And I think that the way that also another change I would make is that insurance companies be forced to deal with reality. We have the strictest building code in the state of Florida and the, some of the highest rates because the insurance computers don't take into account the fact that we don't have a lot of windstorm damage. Why? Because of a strict building code. And until they start accepting reality, we're going to have too high rates down here. So I strongly support firms' efforts and I'll always rely on their judgment. I would be very right about uh, uh, using firm and, and their advice. And uh, I would also say that the legislature does have to be uh, review rate increases before they happen. As an alternative solution, um, as much as you may hear me uh, talk badly of the federal government, I would have to say it would be unique to try to use the federal government as a backstop in all natural disasters, not just not just hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes, ice storms, whatever you have. If there was some sort of guarantee that in times of uh, natural disaster, that the federal government would pick up the first, uh, in, a, in specific areas of a natural disaster, the first part of the damages that occur, you could neutralize the effect of the difference of living in different areas of the country and the state based off of the risks that's associated with whether it's a hurricane or an earthquake or a tornado. And if you had that federal backstop, you could then possibly interest more insurance companies and create a more competitive environment where those insurance companies would want to participate and offer policies knowing that there's a federal backstop in the event of a, of a natural disaster. So we have to look at other alternatives as that, uh, at, uh, for, for uh, reducing the cost of in-store insurance, and we also still have to have the legislative oversight before it happens. Make sure we raise your